once again, I'm Andreas 13, and here we are at the African American News set here at the Roosevelt Media Center. Now, on today's show, we're going to be talking about more senseless violence here in our community, more gang violence, more murder, chaos, and mayhem. First, I want my panel to introduce themselves. We're going to start at my far right. My name is Sergio Argueta. I'm the president and founder of Strong, struggling to reunite our new generation, which is a youth-driven organization trying to address the violence issue on our streets. My name is Ruth Rivas. Got to hold your mic up. Hold your mic up. My name is Ruth Rivas. I'm Eric Rivera's sister. He was a young man that was killed on June 12th, the day of the Puerto Rican Day parade, coming home um, by a gang called MS-13. My name is Sabrina Woody. My son was killed. My son was killed by um, his best friend over some dogs. He died July 20th, the year 2000. Um, now, I want to talk to you. Uh, tell me what your organization is about and how you got involved with the march that was held this weekend. All right. Well, uh, my organization was a result of Eric Rivera's death. I was, I was born and raised here in Long Island. I grew up in Hempstead, and uh, I've seen the changes, and you know how it went from a nice community to a very difficult community to reside in because of the violence and all the negative elements. So basically, um, I just graduated from Nashville Community College. I was accepted to Columbia University, and I went to the Puerto Rican Parade, and by coincidence met Eric Rivera on the trade Ryan Hole. And uh, half an hour after I said goodbye to this gentleman I had just met, I found out he was beaten to death. Um, that quickly made me realize that something had to be done. No matter how far, for example, I was coming along in life in regards to success and what people view as success, my community is in shambles. So I quickly decided that something had to be done I gathered a lot of friends. We're a multi-ethnic, youth-driven organization. And the reason we were started was because we found that in most of the organizations that are out there, law enforcement agencies, schools, clergy, that are trying to attack this issue, the most important component is missing, and that is the youth. Um, many of times, the youth are criticized for not taking part, for not getting involved, and things of that nature. And so what we felt was, without the youth movement, you're not going to be able to address this issue. So through workshops and, and basically bringing awareness, serving as motivators, as, as you know, relaying our life stories, many of my members have seen, have, have, have faced certain struggles, and they've overcome those struggles. So basically, that's what we do. Well, I mean, doing the, you know, the civil rights marches and also the situation with Nelson Mandela, I think a lot of American youth here in America in present day, 2000, they um, haven't got that message or they haven't lived out that message, but all of those movements were fueled by youth. And we've been covering uh, events for eight years here, and oftentimes the youth has been absent. Now there is a lot of violence that is being targeted on youth by youth. And we see that these are these different elements are manifestations of that, such as uh, the situation with your son. Now you say this was one of his uh, so-called friends. Yes, it was one of his so-called. So, hold, hold the mic up. It was one of his cold so-called friends that he grew up with. I don't know what took place. All I know was over the dogs and something that really shouldn't have happened. Because I know, you know, I, he wasn't the best kid in the world, but he was my child. And he didn't go around bullying people, none of that. And it's just, uh, I don't really know what to say about that because I'm still wait, I'm still looking for answers behind it also. Now, there are many support groups. Have any of the support groups here in Nassau County 
Have any of them reached out to you from Dennis Dillon's office? Ain't no. From the, the services office? Have any of them reached out to you? Only one that came to me. I met a young man that was with Sergio. No one from Catholic Charities? No one came to me. No, none of the Nassau County churches? None of them came to me. Now, Ms. Rivera's, we've had you on the show a number of times regarding the situation with your brother. Now, um, hold the mic up and, and tell us, as as that outreach for your situation, I know we were here, I know Dennis Dillon spoke to you personally, I know you've got a lot of support. Um, have you gotten uh, correspondence from any of these other organizations um, out here, the EAC? No. And, um, uh, EAC is in Hempstead, they get $30 million from Nassau County. Have you got, I know the legislators, I know the commissioner of police was on that. I Have spoke you, briefly to some legislators, you know, throughout the first couple of weeks. They were all very active. They wanted to participate. But after it died down, they haven't even contacted my mother. They haven't called her to see how she's doing. They haven't called to see if she's okay. Um, the first two weeks, yeah, everybody wanted to get involved. And I believe because of the result of meeting yourself, it was why a lot of the arrests were done a lot quicker because it had taken a month before any arrests were made and that was after I had been on your show and we were asking them for answers and that was one of the results of coming on your show was that they started giving us answers but it had to take that they didn't do it up you know it didn't come from within the way that I see it if no one is there pushing them, they're not going to get answers for you. They're not going to give you what you want. They're not going to make the arrest. They're just going to pile it up on another desk, and we'll get to it when we get to it. We'll get to it when someone starts pu pushing buttons. We'll get to it when someone starts asking questions. Other than that, if they don't ask, they don't want to address it. Well, I'm glad to see that you're looking much better, and you <laughs> look like you're in your get-even mode instead of getting angry. That's right. Now, um, Nassau County budget cuts here have uh, been across the board slashing youth programs in the black communities. Now, since this, this rise of this type of thing, I'm, I'm gonna throw this at you. Do you feel that this is just indicative of the culture, the violent culture that we have because uh, the gangs, the friends, is still violence. Do you feel that uh, there are proper mechanisms here in place to uh, avert that? The Nassau County Youth Board, which had a budget of over $12 million at some point, is supposedly <coughs> to distribute that money into various communities. And uh, just recently, uh, the Youth Board wanted to cut all programs in black communities. Now, do you feel that these things have a correlation or there's there's definitely a correlation. I mean, you have to understand that that one of the things we're going to focus on is basically prevention. Um, why is it that it costs thirty-seven thousand dollars to incarcerate an individual per year, and twelve thousand dollars to educate in a public to get a public school education, and it's so difficult to get educated, but so easy to get incarcerated. You know that those these are issues we have to address. One of the that's big business. The, Putting people in jail is big <coughs> to create jobs for the other people. But what we also have to address is that we as a community, and then again, like you said, the previous movements, the civil rights movement. Where are our youth? And not where are they? Are we properly channeling our energies to get them involved? Too many a times we sit back and we criticize the youth for not getting involved. At times when they try to get involved do we allow them to get involved? I've been, you know, throughout, I, I've been doing my homework. You know, I've been, I've been going out there trying to do my outreach. Basically, we're an organization that's two to three months old, you know, as a result of Eric Rivera's death. In the process, we've already become incorporated. We're a not-for-profit organization. Basically, most of our expenses as of right now are out of pocket. Um, we were gonna wait to hold this youth march later on in, in the spring. However, with the recent tally, I mean, three losses last week alone, we decided we couldn't wait till the spring to try and make an impact. You know, we have to put our name out there and, l and let these youngsters know, you know what, we're going to go to your schools and we're going to relay our life stories. We're going to tell you, you know, there is a different way. Um, 
My organization, the members of my organization, my youngest member is 12 years old, and my oldest member is 23 years old, and we have two advisors who, who are great advisors. But basically, you get a different impact when young people walk into a classroom and tell you, listen, I not only walked in your shoes, I was probably worse than you. And look where I'm at now. Look what I'm doing. Well, look at me. I mean, uh, you're in Hempstead, and you're in Uniondale. Yeah, these are two large tragedies. Now, in Hempstead, at night, what were some of the places that were available for your son to go to? Hempstead? There was nothing in Hempstead. There's nothing available for them to go to but the streets. You don't know of any programs? I know Percy Jackson has something for young kids, but nothing for older people? No. No. Not to get them involved, no. Now, I know that your brother was involved in Dennis Dillon's mm -hmm. boxing involved situation. That's out in Westbury. No, that's in Hempstead. That's in, in Hempstead. Kennedy Park. Yes, that's a, that was yes. at Kennedy Park. Mm -hmm. Now, that was something that he was involved in, right. so, okay. He had just became involved with that. He, he had also been involved at the UCC Youth Center in Uniondale, you know, teaching the uh, other kids, mentoring them, teaching them how to draw, play games with them after school. He was reaching out to them, letting them know, you know, that he at one time had been in the streets. You know, he at one time had got into trouble, but he chose to change his life around. He started working, he got his GED, he was planning to go on college. He had his whole life ahead of him. He had just started to progress and that's when they ended his life. So he had started to take advantage of the different stuff that was in the community, but never got a chance to really fulfill it. Okay. What I would like to do is basically you are in those shoes right now. I want you to look into which camera? That camera right there. And tell the the youth out there not only who are a part of the problem but who want help. Tell them what they should be doing right now because they are right at the epicenter of this epidemic of youth violence. So first you Miss Rivera and then you Mrs. Woody. I would like them to get involved with the school activities, get involved in sports, you know, find something else other than a gang, find something else other than the streets, there's things out there. Even if you have to look into the newspaper, look, ask somebody at school, ask a counselor, I'm sure that they, they are aware of the different facilities that are available. There are some, there's not a lot, hopefully there'll be more, but right now there are limited ones that you could get involved. There's the Bas Boxing Association, that's the teaching at the youth center. I mean, there's other things that you could do besides being in the streets. That's not a choice. Because once you choose that, you might as well just write your own death certificate. The first thing I want to say is, yeah, getting the youth involved, you got to get the parents involved also. Mm -hmm. Because we as parents, our kids tend to look up to us, and if we're not there for them, how can they, who, who is it for them to look up to? You know, we got to start teaching our kids like our parents taught us. You know, a lot of kids, to me, I know a lot of people that's out there, that's been out there, you know, and them kids have no one to look up to. So they think the only way they can take is the streets. No matter if this program is out there, they still don't know nothing of it because the parents is not involved. So the parents got to get involved and get involved with their kids and get off the streets and pay attention to their kids now. I don't care how old your kids is, they're never too old to teach them because once you show your kids, they will follow. Just like me, I took a turnaround in my life, you know, and me and my son started talking and bonding together. And I was sitting up there telling him to go get a job. And he would tell me, Mommy, I am. I am. I want to change my life. But he never got a chance to do that. But I got a chance to change my life. You know, I work for the town of Hempstead part-time. But it ain't nothing. But it's a start. And I'm going to get there. You know, and I just wanted to tell the parents, get involved with your kids' life. The ones that's out there, y'all can do it. 
You know, all you got to do is change your life around and save your kid. That's it. Now, uh, everybody knows that this is a um, election year. Today is November the 6th. Tomorrow is November the 7th, and there will be people flooding the polls. And what I would say to the youth out there, when you are 18 years old, you have to understand one thing. You are given the right to vote. People had to die for that right. People were mur murdered, lynched, decapitated, dragged behind cars, sprayed by hoses, bit by dogs, buried alive, and on and on and on, just so you can go out and vote. Now, one of the ways that you can definitely impact the quality of your life while you're in high school and you're 18 and over you go register to vote and hold those politicians accountable. You have politicians who only care about the people who vote for them. So if you are going to be included in the community as a person who has a vested interest and as a, a what you want to call as a baller, the 18-year-olds, you have to register to vote. You have to be involved with the NAACP, organizations like that. You have to be involved with organizations like our organization, the African American Media Network. You have to be involved, which is an insurance policy in the event that these negative things do arise. This is what you have to do. So that's one message that I myself would send to you guys out there, is register to vote and hold these politicians accountable. You have the town of Hempstead here, right here at the epicenter where this is going on, and they boast a $50 million surplus. Now, a lot of that money is tied to uh, strings. It can only be spent in different ways. But I know a great part of that money, which has been targeted for, for our area, $18 million can be spent in what would you guys tell the people out there, town of Hempstead, the council, who are running for this election, Banks, uh, Goosby, Santino, Wright, uh, Councilbaum, uh, what would you tell them that they need to target some of that money for? And Mr. Gardino. Um, Starting with you, sir. $50 million dollar surplus, you said? That's right. $50 million dollar surplus. Um, Actually, I would question where are the computer centers so our kids can learn the internet skills? Where are the after-school activities so our kids could go play sports and get involved? Where are extracurricular activities during the evening time for those individuals from ages, let's say, 13 to 25, even 24? Um, where are those with a $25 million surplus? Why are they being proposed? Uh, budget cuts by the county legislator and, and Mr. County Executive to cut bus services to get our individuals to schools and and to to work, but the, the buses to the county jail are still running in full force. That's a free bus. Yeah, that's a free bus. You don't have to pay for that one. Basically, that's, that's I, I have more questions than, than statements. They're looking, they're watching this show, so look right into that camera and ask the county, uh, her name is um, Ann, uh, what is it, Ann Irving at the <coughs> Nassau County Youth Board. They're watching. Ask them. Okay. Well, those were my questions. Um, basically, we, we need answers and we need, we need alternatives. And if you do not provide us with those, basically, this will continue to happen. But in regard, on my behalf and the, organ the youth that I represent, I will work very hard to start changing things. And if things don't change, then we're going to make them change. And we ask for your support. And basically, that's what I have to say. Now, you said something, Mrs. Rivera, that was very poignant when I first met you. And I came to the shrine you had there. Um, you spoke to Carolyn McCarthy. I, I now, um, tried to reach her. I never got a hold of her. You She's never, too busy. You never got a hold of Mrs. McCarthy. No. Now, what I'd like you to do is hold that mic up again and look into that uh, camera straight in front of you and tell us, tell Mrs. McCarthy what you wanted to talk to her about when that situation happened to you. She 
states so much that she's against the violence, but right now the way I feel is it's about gun violence. My brother was killed violently. It wasn't with a gun. It wasn't. It was with with a, a bat. It was with a hand. Um, I really want her to consider what her points are to the youth if she's neglecting to address them by not coming into our communities and being there. You know, you live out in Westbury, I believe, but the problems are happening here in Uniondale, in Hempstead, Roosevelt. I think she lives in they Mariola, have to be here. In Westbury, okay. And Westbury's also, you know, you have to address these points. Don't worry about politics right now. Worry about the youth because they're not gonna. There's not gonna be a future if there's no youth, basically. Well, there you have it. You know, I always tell people that um, if you don't do nothing about the economic situation of these young people. I mean, it's all good to tell people don't go into a gang, but the, the, the reality is that we have to provide alternatives to going into the gangs. You made a very good statement earlier on. You said the parents. People are drawn to gangs because the parents are not providing that family environment for their children. And those children are the ones that go on to perpetrate these type of crimes because the gang says, listen, we're going to be your family. And they provide that out of uh, a void that's, they're filling that void. So what I would say to the people out there who are getting involved in gang activity, you do not need to be a follower. The true people, the true leaders are leaders. You don't have to follow people. You don't have to be initiated to be accepted. The, the public enemy, when we started this TV show, mm -hmm. In uh, 1993, you know they made records that changed the world and the way people think. Uh, it takes a nations of millions to hold us back. Um, some, the road less traveled. That's what you need to take out there is the road less traveled. The road less traveled is the road of more success. It might be looking uh, attractive on the, you know, um, the first look. But the whole idea is to take the long way. There is no shortcut in life. There, re there really is no shortcut. So if you think that you're going to get with a gang and, and get a lot of shortcuts, the only shortcut you get with gangs is a shortcut to jail. And that's not even a shortcut anyway, because it's going to lead to that way anyway. Um, as far as the families, and the fathers and the mothers out there who are not there for their children, uh, you guys need to look in the mirror. I mean, now we are suffering from the lack of your parental discretion. Uh, for a long time, uh, this has been building up. This is not something that just happened today. This happened over the last few years, over the last five years. Now, what I, what I want to also go into is... Um, the police out here in Nassau County are the highest paid police department in the United States of America. And I do believe it was your brother who said on the first program is that the streets are not, how come the police aren't making the streets safe for you? So uh, who wants to uh, talk about that? Do you feel that out of the $100,000 a year that the police are able to make out here, do you feel that you're getting that type of protection from the police, Ms. Woody? No, because when my son got shot, it took the police a while to get, it took them like 20 minutes to 15 minutes to get there. And to me, I don't think the boy should have got away, but he got away. When they, they identified the boy, nobody came right away. And I'm still, I still call a detective up to find out what's going on. I found out the boy came back in town, okay? The boy was always in town. There's nothing being done. All I get, oh, the detective's not in here, call you back, can you leave your name? That's all I get. I don't get nothing. I haven't heard nothing back. And I call this detective up 
Warren Ziggerman, and I get nothing. He mm -hmm. talking about he got, they got these places where he could be at down south at his family's house. People done called in to tell him where this boy is at. There's nothing being done. Why? Because he's my kid. He's a black kid. They don't care. But if it goes on, I'm not being prejudiced. But if it happened to a white kid, the person would have been found. That's the way I feel about it. And I believe my son is just as important as they are. Now, now, where is where is your your case with your son right now as we speak? I'm still waiting to hear something. That's it. I'm still waiting on a detective to get in touch with me. Well, um, look into that camera and Mr. Dennis Dillon, who is the district attorney of Nassau County, uh, tell him what you would like to be done for the millions of dollars that are spent just in his office. Well, I, I would like to hear more. And I would like some results done. I mean, some results. I want to. I want to rest. Be able to rest. To know that my son's killer has been caught. And there's nothing. I'm not hearing nothing. Nothing from the police. All right. Um, as you know. We here on the African American News have been telling the police and telling the politicians and telling the community that they needed to do something over five years, and this is where we have now come to. Um, this is not an easy situation, and it's not going to be easy answers. But we do know one thing. Parents, be parents. Youth out there, get involved with the movements in your community. That's the only way. The, the youth have been partying. I've been filming it. I've been covering it for seven years. The youth have been having a good time. Traditionally, the fight has not been carried by adults like myself and uh, Sergio. It has been done by youth. So you need to take notes from the past. The youth in Zimbabwe, the youth in Soweto who were murdered by the South African police for Mandela, for Martin Luther King. Youth of today, take notes. If you're gonna die for a cause, not because. All right? My name is Andreas 13. This is the African American News, and we'll be following this. And what I would say to the elected officials out there, uh, it's real right now. Don't wait till it's in your community over there in Hewlett mm -hmm. and in Garden City and in East Meadow, because Columbine was an all-white community. Remember that? So um, it's happening right here, and you need to do something about it. And uh, Commissioner Willett, we know that the police department is the highest paid, so they need to have the most highest quality for Mrs. Woody to apprehend the person who killed her son. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.